There's one recent hardware update from Apple that may not have gotten the press that it deserved. And it's this, the MagSafe charger. At Apple's latest event, this charger occupied less than 10 seconds of the more than one and a half hour long event. I'm gonna help you learn exactly what has changed, why I think this is exciting, and what my initial test results have shown about its new capabilities. So let's jump in and talk about why the humble MagSafe puck is the most overlooked update from this latest Apple event. Beginning with what has changed, the new MagSafe charger features faster charging speeds. It's got the addition of the new Qi 2 standard. There's upgrades to the cable materials, and there's also multiple cable length options. This last one was a specific call out in my previous MagSafe video, which looks at 10 things I wish I knew before buying one, linked down in the description. The prior model was available in one single one meter or about three feet size, which was tremendously limiting for its use. The new version adds a two meter option, which opens up lots more doors for how you can use your charger without the need for any extension cables. This is the two meter version here, which is about six feet in length and gives you a lot more possibilities. One big question that I had when ordering the new MagSafe charger was how to tell the new one apart from the old one when placing an order. Since Apple did not elect to give the new one an original name like MagSafe 2 or something else like that, there isn't a clear way to know that you're getting the new one, especially from a third party retailer like Amazon. Well, thankfully, as soon as I unboxed it, it was immediately clear that the way you can tell apart the new from the old is by the cable material. The new charger moves from the original rubber material used to a higher end braided cable. Now, Apple has been slowly transitioning many of their cables over to this higher quality design, and I'm glad that they did it here with the MagSafe. Though it can be a little tough to see when you're shopping on a site like Amazon, it is there in the pictures. So make sure you look closely to ensure that you're getting the braided cable and not the original one if you wanna make sure you're getting the new version. The only other way that you could tell them apart would be to look down in the item description as this is the first MagSafe puck to support the newer Qi 2 charging standard. So if you see Qi 2 listed, then you can be pretty confident you're getting the right one. The Qi 2 standard is an exciting step forward in wireless charging, and it helped to simplify the wireless charging ecosystem. The original Qi charging standard started at just five watts of charging. There were then some updates and eventually some specific devices achieving higher speeds with proprietary chargers, both on the Android side and with Apple's MagSafe. MagSafe was the first to introduce the magnetic charger, which helps with the alignment and upped the maximum charging speed on iPhones to 15 watts, a big jump from the super slow 5 watts where wireless charging had begun. Now, with the updated standard, any Qi 2 charger and device can achieve 15 watts of charging, a much more acceptable charging speed. Separately, Qi 2 allows devices to communicate with the chargers to adjust charging speeds rather than being set to a specific power output. This helps in particular with heat management, which has always been an issue with wireless chargers. Finally, Qi 2 makes magnets that are found in MagSafe part of the official standard. Known as the Magnetic Power Profile, or MPP for short, these magnets help in the same way that MagSafe always has, aligning chargers to ensure the most efficient charge possible, since misaligned chargers will be slower and will generate more excess heat. So what does this all mean? Well, now any Qi 2 charger can provide 15 watts of power to your iPhone without the need for the much more restrictive made for MagSafe label that Apple previously used to restrict access to their official charging spec and those higher speeds associated with it. At the same time, this new MagSafe puck can achieve even higher speeds with the latest iPhones, much like how some phones could charge faster than the original Qi standard, with proprietary chargers. While this is still restrictive, this is like deciding between good and better rather than the old standard where a five watt charger was just painfully slow. So what speeds can the new MagSafe achieve? Well, if you've got yourself an iPhone 16 or later, you can get up to 25 watts of wireless charging. iPhone 12 and later still get 15 watts and iPhone 8 and later will have 7.5 watts. So the faster charging is only realized on newer models. 
Additionally, Apple notes that a 20 watt power adapter is required for the 15 watt charging and a 30 watt charger is required for 25 watt charging. It's unclear whether these advertised numbers are simply the result of showing the minimum Apple specific charger required, or if that extra headroom is required in order to achieve those charging numbers. If I had to guess, I'd say that the extra wattage is lost to heat and other inefficiencies, though I'm not 100% certain that's right. In either case, my recommendation is to avoid the Apple power adapters and instead opt for Anchor, which has options which are both smaller and cheaper than what Apple offers. I'll provide a few links down in the video description for you to take a look at. So what does this faster testing look like in practice? I ran a quick test to see how the new charger would perform. As a disclaimer, there are a lot of factors that go into charging speed, so your results may vary, but the results I got were pretty shocking. Now, first of all, I used a 60 watt anchor adapter, shown here, so that I made sure that I just had plenty of headroom over that required 30 watts, just to be safe. I also was charging on the brand new iPhone 16 Pro in order to have the fastest charging capabilities available today. My test was simple. I started with my phone at 30%, attached the MagSafe puck and started a timer. I then checked at set intervals to monitor progress up to 40%. So essentially this is measuring a quick charge capability in a small spurt. I did this to avoid as much as possible complications around heat and other factors and to make this test easy to execute on my behalf. Is this a complete test? No, not at all. Is this a perfect test? Also no, but I think it's valuable nonetheless. So the results. I started with the original MagSafe charger. After five minutes of charging, my phone reached 33%. After 10 minutes, it was at 38% and it reached that 40% target in under 12 minutes. After letting my phone drain back down to 30%, I then repeated the test with the new MagSafe charger. After five minutes, it had climbed all the way to 39% and it hit 40% in under six minutes. So that's about half the time that the original model took. I'm not equipped to control for all of the possible charging variables that could impact a test like this, but the fact that my results represent a doubling of charging speed is dang impressive. The biggest thing that I was happy to see was that the extra power didn't simply result in a bunch more heat, it really did make charging noticeably faster. Heat though is definitely a concern for a lot of users based on the comments from my previous MagSafe video. Even though Apple and others will attempt to manage heat as best they can, they simply can't change the laws of thermodynamics. Anytime you're charging, and when wireless charging in particular, you're going to create heat as a result. Now, excessive heat can damage your battery and cause it to hold less charge and be less effective over time. Since the MagSafe standard is still relatively new, we don't have a ton of long-term tests and results to point to about the impact of regular use, but I'll go ahead and enter my anecdote out into the world as one data point for you guys. My iPhone 14 Pro has been a daily driver phone since it was released about two years ago. Over that time, it has been charged many, many times with a MagSafe charger, since that's been the primary desk charger for my desk working area for that entire span. I'd estimate that about 50% of this phone's charging over the course of its life has been via a MagSafe charger. The current battery health on that phone is 92%. If you figure that's about 4% per year, I'd say that's pretty solid, but I'm curious how this may stack up with others' experience, so feel free to let me know down in the comments how your phone has held up. Now let's talk about pricing. The new MagSafe charger starts at the exact same price point as the original, $39 for the one meter version and now $49 for the longer two meter version. Now I admit this is not cheap, especially considering you can just use the included charging cable that comes with your phone and a $20 power adapter to get faster charging speeds via the USB-C port. MagSafe remains a luxury for your iPhone. It's not needed, but it is fun and easy to use. If you're interested in the fastest wireless speeds possible, this is the only way to get 25 watts now and probably for the foreseeable future, unless Apple decides to permit third parties to access these speeds via the Made for MagSafe program. Luckily, any official Qi 2 charger will get 15 watts of charging, which is more than enough for most people. So it's really up to you. Do you want the best or do you just want good enough? 
no matter where you land, the current landscape feels more exciting and I'm happy that I could make this video to highlight this underreported improvement to the MagSafe charger and wireless charging on the iPhone more broadly. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.